Hey, what's up guys? Jake with Legacy 4x4 here again. And today we're gonna to be doing my industrial CNC plasma cutters overview video. finished. I finalized my bill of materials. I finalized my G-code and INI file setups. I'm going to have those available for you in this video. The plasma cutter is done. It's almost 100%. I just need to do a little bit more fine tuning, but we're going to do that fine tuning by doing the first couple jobs on the plasma cutter right now to really see how this thing cuts and how well it performs on an actual project. So this machine has a total cut area of 52 inches by 52 inches. This allows me to put a 48 by 48 inch sheet perfectly on the machine and to reach the entire edges of that entire sheet. I buy my sheet in four foot by four foot sections like that from my steel supplier. And so this makes it really convenient for me because I can just put one sheet on there, get it cut, and then just toss out the scrap. All right, for the hardware side of the electronics, I'm using Meza control boards and a Meza THC encoder. I'm using the Meza 7i76e control board. This board has way more inputs and way more functionality than I need, but it's a very strong board and is very reasonably priced. At about $200, that board's a steal. For torch height control, I'm using an appropriate Meza THC AD-10. This Meza encoder card is able to take the voltage from the plasma cutter as it strikes an arc and turns that voltage into a velocity, which then can be read by the Meza 7i76e and then encoded onto Plasma C. The stepper motor drivers are all available from OMC Stepper Online. That's also where I got my power supplies and also all of the motors for this build. I'm using three of the same drivers to run the all three of the X and Y motors, and then I'm using one smaller driver to run the Z motor. The enclosure, the pins, the wires, and all of that like small associate electronic stuff was all purchased on Amazon. I built the hardware enclosure for the electronics all to be in one contained NEMA case that's going to keep dust and water out of it during the operation of the plasma cutter. This case can also be unbolted and moved as necessary if I need to conduct service on it, and it can be opened from the back for any kind of quick changes. Overall, the electronics hardware was relatively straightforward, and if you study a few wiring diagrams, very, very manageable to do. You just have to take your time and be patient with it. I do have an entire video. It's a little dry and it's a little long, but it does show in detail how I built that NEMA enclosure and how I set up all of my hardware and all of my electronics in that enclosure to function with the machine. Everything on this machine was built by me, by hand, in my garage. The only piece that I outsourced on this entire machine to be built by somebody else was the water table itself. That water table was built at my steel supplier. They cut it out on their plasma cutter out of a six foot piece of steel, and then they bent it on their finger brake. I don't have a finger brake that can bend a nearly five feet wide piece of steel, and I didn't want to go through and do a full weld seam around the whole thing. That was the one thing that I did outsource. Everything else was built by me here. I bring that up to just say that these machines are very manageable and very easy to build, and hopefully by the end of this video, and if you go back and watch my other videos, you'll be able to tell how I built this, and you'll be able to get some good resources at the end of this to help you build your own. For the mechanical hardware, this machine is running a 1200 ounce NEMA 34 motors on the X and Y axes. I have two motors on my Y axes and one motor on my X axes. My Z axis is holding a NEMA 23 motor that is operated via a lead screw. Those motors are all paired with a gear reduction drive system from Avid CNC. That gear reduction drive system allows the motor to operate at a three to one ratio, which allows for a much finer resolution. This gives you a much greater clarity in any of the cuts than what a direct drive system could have done. Those gear reduction drive systems are one of the big things I wanted to improve when I built this machine versus the first one that I built. My original one was a direct drive system and I noticed that I lost a lot of resolution as I attempted to do clean, very precise cuts due to the fact that it was a direct drive system. So the gear reduction drive was a huge benefit for me building this plasma cutter. Each of the axes slide on a piece of half inch aluminum that was cut, notched, and slotted to fit around those drive systems. That aluminum rides on a 20 millimeter pillow block 
going down the whole length of each of those axes. Those pillow blocks are attached to some extruded aluminum that I sourced from Parco Aluminum Solutions. All of the aluminum extrusion are 40 series aluminum extrusion, and so all of the hardware that bolts things to the aluminum is all interchangeable. My Y axis is a 40 millimeter by 80 millimeter, both of those rails are, and the X axis is an 80 millimeter by 160 millimeter piece of extruded aluminum. All of those aluminum pieces are exactly 60 inches long. This gives the machine a little bit of over travel so that the gantry can park somewhere, still allowing me to reach the entire 52 inch by 52 inch work area. My autofill water table is one of my favorite features about the machine. I have a 55 gallon plastic drum on the bottom side of my machine and in that drum, I'm able to put a water and clean cut solution. By having an autofill setup, I'm able to keep the machine drained when I'm not using it and have the entire solution inside the barrel, out of the way, and free from contamination from anything else I'm doing at the shop. To fill it, I just simply plug in a hose to the top of the adapter on the top of that barrel, open up the valve, and then the water begins to flow into the table. Doing that uses about one to two PSI of air, so there's no threat of the barrel possibly exploding due to the low pressure of air needed to get the water into the table. All right, that's enough of me talking. Let me go ahead and show you guys the table itself because I know that's what you're really interested in. And then we'll talk about some design cues, where I got some of my ideas for it, and then some ways that you could probably make this a little cheaper if you wanted to in the long run. Starting on the left here, underneath all this rail, you can see the electronics enclosure that we built there in the corner. You can see the two y axis pieces of aluminum extruded here, and then you can see the x axes up here. This gives you a good shot of those Avid CNC gear reduction drives. They fit a NEMA 34 motor perfectly. They bolt right into the piece of aluminum, as you can see there. And then you can see the actual belt and drive system. My Z-axis uses just a cheap uh, plasma Z-axis off of eBay that my torch bolts right into. I do use a machine torch. I prefer these over having to open up the hand torches and make them fit for plasma cutters. This is worth a couple hundred dollars in my mind. The Z-axis does have a float switch, and so this machine does do automatic height sensing based off of the material that you have on the machine. These slats are made out of three, three inch by eighth inch steel, cut to length, and then slotted into my slat holders down here. These slats are replaceable in the event that they get too born, burned up by operating of the machine. On the downside here, you can see the water barrel connected with some PVC piping. There is an entire video about the water barrel as well and the automatic fill system. The entire frame of this table was made out of two by two box steel, about eighth inch thick. The only other piece of steel was that piece of U-channel sitting right there. All right, let's talk cost, because I know that's what everybody really wants to talk about. How much did this machine cost me? And what kind of benefits do I get for a machine of this kind of price point versus the one that I made previously? So my previous machine cost me about $2,500 total to build. That is not including the price of the plasma cutter itself. This machine was nearly twice that. I have almost $5,000 into this machine. However, I think the quality of the parts that we're using and the increased resolution justifies that price to me. So for $5,000, again, we're using all the Meza hardware, we're using some good drivers and power supplies from OMC Stepper Online, and some high quality motors as well from OMC Stepper Online. The extruded aluminum drive system and the linear rails are an inherently more stable and tighter way to build one of these tables. Steel rail, like two by two steel tubing, like what I used on the last one for its drive rails, that is also just inherently wavy. It has some slide issues, you know, the little riser gantries that I used, they just couldn't work quite as effectively as something on extruded aluminum does. Well, you'll notice if you look at a few industrial or similar type machines, they all use extruded aluminum in different varieties. Some of them use thin aluminum just along the edges and then use a steel frame. When it came to designing this table, I took a lot of design cues from some of the well-known manufacturers of CNC machines. I looked at both wood um, wood router machines and plasma machines and some laser machines and water jet machines as well. My idea was is I wanted to take as much information and mimic as many of the good design things I saw in all of these machines that I could since I was building from the ground up. So yeah, it's expensive. It was $5,000 in parts, but that's okay. It's worth it to have a high quality machine that can do high quality cuts and I am 100% sure that this machine will pay for itself over time. Plus, I get to use it for all the stuff that I want to make. When it comes to figuring out where you can cut some, some cost, just be cognizant of where you're cutting. You don't want to necessarily cheap out on components that are extremely important to the machine's functionality. 
I kind of did that when I built the first machine. And again, those were the issues I ran into and why I wanted so badly to build a new machine was because that first one didn't satisfy my needs due to the places that I chose to cut cost on. All right, well, let's just go and get right into it, guys. Let's start doing some test cuts. I've got three big signs I need to cut out. I got a piece of 14 gauge loaded on the table, ready to go, and we're gonna go ahead and see how this does. I'm doing a large American flag kind of accent detail for the front of a bumper that I just built for somebody. I'm cutting out another little accent detail for the front of somebody else's bumper. Um, and then I'm actually cutting out a big legacy 4x4 sign to hang on the outside of my garage here to kind of add some flair to the new shop space. So I won't lie to you guys, it's not completely perfect. It did have a little bit of issues. It got caught on itself a couple of times. I let the computer time out once. We just have a little bit of fine tuning to do. That's okay. Things like this are never ending projects, but that's all right. All right, that's it guys. I hope you like that. There's kind of a lot of stuff to cover. And I know I didn't go into incredible detail on the individual components. I do have videos that cover each of the steps of this build that go into much greater detail. Feel free to drop any comments below that you want. I'll answer any questions that you guys give me as quickly as I can. And then feel free to check out those other videos too, and you'll get some additional details, and you'll see some questions already asked down there in those videos that will hopefully help you on the way to yours. The bill of material and example code files for my INI and HAL files for the Linux CNC setup are both going to be available at our website. I'll have a link to the website down below, and it'll link straight to the store section of the website where you'll be able to download those documents. But that's it guys. Again, I'm super happy with how this machine turned out. It's a lot better than my last one. I think this is gonna be a great addition to the shop and I'm gonna really use it, especially when I start my next build that you might be able to see the starting point right behind me here. That new build will be coming out pretty soon. So stick around for that. I'm really excited about it. I think it's gonna be a great, really unique, fun build for us.